Okay, this is part two, and this is a, a recap of the events of the past week, weeks rather. August 30th was execution day for Lori McBride and all her clones, about 130 of them in cages. I wanted to give each Lori McBride a chance to go to heaven when they died, and so to each one, I read some Bible before their execution tried to try to get them to accept Christ. They screamed at me, never, never, and some of them cursed at me and called me a bitch. Lori, Lori kept saying, each Lori kept saying, you will never have Brent. Even as Vladimir Putin and Brent Spiner personally executed Lori McBride and about four of her clones. As we got to about the fifth clone, something strange happened. The judge told me that animals were coming out of their pockets and growing into huge elephants and other creatures, and that all the lorries were escaping out of their cages. One of the lorries grabbed Brent Spiner, and then all the lorries dematerialized like you see in the Star Trek transporter room, and they vanished, along with Brent Spiner. Judge Terrence Jenkins asked me for advice. He said Brent Spiner was gone. I said, tell Vladimir to get our nanotechnology research team on this and to set up satellite scanners over the entire Earth to search for Brent Spiner's genes so we can find him. For about an hour, the judge and I talked through Skype as we tried to find Brent. <clears throat> then, I, then I heard from Brent, brain to brain, and told the judge that brain, Brent was talking to me brain to brain, that he was on a UFO in a dark room and on a bed making love to me. The aliens finally took the Lorries away from Brent and left him alone. Brent was making non-stop love to me on that UFO, and it seemed the aliens were respecting Brent's feelings for me and pulled the Lorry clones away from him into another chamber on the UFO. I was so in tune to Brent that I heard several of them scream in that other chamber on the UFO. But Brent was pretty oblivious to it all and only focused on making love to me on his bed in that dark room on the UFO. They left him alone, and I sensed that God had done something to threaten those aliens, and so they behaved themselves around Brent. I was scared they might experiment on him like they've done to other humans they've abducted. The judge asked if Brent could kick the aliens away from him. I said, "Ah, oh, judge, I don't think that would do much good. These are aliens. They are way above us in technology. Actually, I told him, eight hey, UFOs are satanic. They're demonic. I told him to contact Dr. Peter Ruckman, who knew a lot about UFOs, that perhaps he could help us and we could get prayer support to get Brent back. My only concern was that I wasn't sure what the UFO aliens would do to Brent, but I went to God in prayer and had this strange peace that God was terrifying those UFO aliens and threatening to do something terrible to them if they wouldn't turn Brent over to us. Finally, my conversation with the judge ended and he asked me to make a YouTube video to ask people to report to us if they found Brent. I told the judge, let me go and make love to Brent. It's keeping him going on that UFO. Brent wants me. I told Brent it was hard for me to get into making love to him. We do a brain to brain on a UFO, but I tried. Then in the middle of my love making to Brent, he told me that the UFO dropped him off on a desert somewhere and it was sunny. And at the time I was talking to him, it was like, it was like uh, one in the morning. Eastern Standard Time. So that kind of gave us a clue where he was. He said, Gail, I'm in the middle of a desert and it's sunny. Please let them know where I'm at. Uh, he, yeah, he said, please let them know where I'm at. Go to your computer and send an email to the judge and Vladimir and tell them I'm depending on you. You can save me. So that's what I did. And Vladimir Putin and the judge flew out to the desert in Egypt. He was in the middle of the Egyptian desert to rescue Brent, and we got him back. After some rest and food, Brent resumed writing me through his YouTube channel and told me he was safe and back to Earth and that I was a hero for rescuing him the way I did. He told me this UFO abduction really made him think about God because I told him that I believe God ordered those UFO creatures to let Brent go or God would punish them, and that's why the UFO dropped him off. UFO dropped him off at the desert. The rest of this story I'll tell through letters I wrote to Brent Spiner over the past several days.
September 4th, 2011, I think the Jesuits have made a clone of myself and you, dearest friend. I have gone to God in prayer and asked him how the Jesuits use you to have sex with Laurie. What he seems to tell me should make you feel better. Despite the fact that we both have a strong Jewish genetic profile, I believe the Jesuits have made a clone or clones of myself and you for the purposes of destroying us. They may have created these evil clones of myself and you using their accelerated growth hormones. I believe our clones normally live in some sort of underground city. That we may not have discovered yet. They are able to bring these clones up to where we live using transporter technology, kind of like what they did when we were executing the Lorries, you know, where they just vanished. Let's go back to your courtroom scene where Lori ran to the bathroom to have sex with you, and we couldn't stop her. Here's what I think happened. Sometime before Lori came to you in the bathroom, you were transformed in a millisecond and got transported somewhere else, some alternate reality that exactly replicated the courtroom scene you just left so that you felt like you never left that Quebec courtroom, but you did leave the scene, and your clone came in your place. The switch out took place within the confines of your body. The Jesuits are able to do this switch out between you and your clone right there in your body, and the transformation is so quick that no one can tell it has happened. It's like, it's like you're standing in a spot, and you get switched out with your clone, and you go off to some alternate reality. Your body is transported using transporter technology to another location, probably a real place that is an exact replication of the Quebec courtroom where you are at, or maybe it's a real place in your mind. So that the Jesuits can make you feel that you are still at the Quebec courtroom when you are not there. So now the Jesuits have you, the real Brent Spiner, in an alternate reality, and your clone is in the bathroom having violent sex with Lori McBride. Because it is not you having sex with Lori, but your evil clone, you feel like as this sex happens that you are watching it afar off. Like you're not really doing it to Lori, but just observing it. That's because it is not you, but your evil clone who is doing it to Lori. Once the clone has finished having his violent sex, the Jesuits make sure that when they switch you out with your clone using their transporter technology, that they retain the damage your clone did to his penis, and you receive the damaged penis in the switch out. So now you're back from your alter, al alternate reality and have returned to the courtroom scene and feel the damage to your penis. This makes you feel like it was you and not your evil clone who had the violent sex with Lori. I think the way the sex kitten program works is that it makes it so that the switch out between you and your evil clone can take place so fast no one can tell it happened. Your evil clone probably lives in some underground city somewhere and the Jesuits pull him up when they need him to pretend to be you and to commit evil acts that you would never do. Here's the good news. According to the Bible, man is body, soul, and spirit. I'm going to include a link at the Brent, Siner, Brent Spiner section of my website, gabrielchana.com, on the first page that will link to doc, Dr. Peter Ruckman's message called Body, Soul, and Spirit. I don't think the Jesuits can do this switch out between you and your evil clone if the Holy Spirit lives within you and has separated your soul from your body. When a person becomes a born-again Christian, the Holy Spirit lives in their body and causes the soul to separate from the body. Kind of like what happens when ice cubes in an ice cube tray, in an ice cube tray, when you squeeze the tray and loosen the cubes to release them for use. The, Jes the Jesuit transformer technology cannot, cannot move the soul with the body if the soul is attached to the Holy Spirit and is separate from the body, which is what happens when you accept Christ and become a born-again Christian. I do believe the Jesuits can shove the soul of the evil clone into your body if you're a born-again Christian, but they can't do the switch out. That's because they can't move the body to another location, even with their transporter technology, if they can't move the Holy Spirit who lives inside the body of the Christian. I don't think the Holy Spirit can be moved by Jesuit transporter technology. When a person becomes a born-again Christian, the soul is detached from the body and is attached to the Holy Spirit. That's why the Jesuits can't do the switch out on me. 
they can try and shove the soul of the evil clone, of my evil clone, into me, which is what I think happened to me yesterday. But when I listened to a lot of Bible and the Holy Spirit took up more residence inside me, I was able to weaken their influence. They were not able to accomplish a complete switch out yesterday, though they tried. That's because I have the Holy Spirit inside me, and the Holy Spirit resists their technology. As far as I'm concerned, you have never had sex with Lori McBride, except perhaps once in September 1992, when she may have drug raped you to gain an entrance. As far as the full three weeks of sex she claimed she had with you in September 1992, I believe once she gained an entrance, she may have established a sex kitchen programming in you so that the switch out between you and your clone could occur seamlessly. The reason you don't remember all this sex is because it was your clone and not you having the sex with Lori. I think when your clone switches out with you, that the Jesuits put you into some sort of stasis where you almost cease to exist or they put you into an alternate reality and then they bring you back when your clone has done his thing. Your clone lives in some underground city normally and only comes up with when, when the Jesuits need him. I'm going to continue this on another tape. Now, I can do a little bit more. Hold on. I was with you in brain-to-brain -brain loving while you were on that UFO, and I know you did not have sex with 100 or more Lori McBride clones. This is what actually happened. They all got pregnant. So the big question, how did you manage... To to make all 100 of them pregnant when you were making love to me. Perhaps your clone was on that spaceship, and maybe that screaming we heard when the aliens took them away into another chamber was your evil clone having violent sex with them. So while you were making love to me on that bed on that spacecraft, your evil clone was on the spacecraft too, making love to all 100 or more of the Lori clones, and when he was done, the aliens dumped the pregnant Lori's back to Earth. Good news, you've never gone to bed with Lori, except maybe in September 1992 when she drug raped you. And I'm going to continue this on another tape. 